your energy forecast for Tuesday, July 30th. Okay, so we have the moon in Gemini all day. This definitely piques our curiosity. It makes us a little bit more extroverted. We are more open to kind of dabbling in the world around us. We're looking for interactions in order to trigger some inspiration, some light bulb moments, some epiphanies that are going to help us further expand on some of the new ideas that we're currently percolating on. There are 12 different aspects here today, so definitely picking up the pace in the cosmos. So far this week, we've had two moon days, relatively quiet days of the week. Now we're starting to see the energy start to kind of pick up a bit. A lot of that is because the moon in Gemini, again, has us rapidly processing, analyzing, really kind of poking the bear, if you will, to see what it is that we could possibly be doing from here. We have 12 aspects, eight of those aspects are going to involve the moon. And let me just set the scene here today, seeing as we have Mars and Jupiter already in this Gemini energy, we are expecting some conjunctions here today, which means that there is an ending just as much as there is a beginning. And we are definitely going to start seeing a percolation of passion, of desire, of clarity. So that's going to be definitely working in our favor. The moon in this Gemini energy going to kick the day off with Mars. Mars is the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's been in Gemini energy a little bit unfocused, a little bit scattered on where our time, energy, and attention is needed the most. The Gemini energy, again, kind of highlights two very extreme choice points. We're very torn on what, who, what, where our energy and attention is needed the most. So this conjunction is an ending and it is a beginning. The ending is kind of putting a closure to, I'm going to say our introvertedness to our tunnel vision focus on one particular matter. Now we're trying to see both sides of the coin. We also are going to see this beginning chapter of new passions, new desires, new intensities start to rise within us, especially our desire to connect connect with what you may ask well connect the dots with what the f is actually going on in the world right now connect to our higher self connect to a new passion connect to a new desire and connect to people in the world around us although many of us are kind of social phobes at this particular point very introverted very cautious when it comes to sharing time energy and space with the world around us we do have to have trans encounters in order to refresh renew our soul our spirit our hope our faith in humanity in the future. So this is definitely going to put a little bit of pep back in our step. Now, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over the Gemini energy that the moon is in. Mercury's in his rulership in this Virgo energy. He is slowing down each and every single day as we attempt to approach his retrograde cycle, but he's not there yet. Mercury is making a positive interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. This is going to work in our favor because we're thinking about the future. The North Node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to see our new mission, trying to see our new passion, trying to see where it is that we're going on a solo quest to kind of do things on our own by ourselves in order to continue to build the relationship dynamic up with ourselves. The Mercury in Virgo energy has the ability to focus on the smaller details that are needed to be pieced together in order for the greater, grander vision to actually form. So the North Node is kind of pushing us to think about the future, is pushing us to kind of percolate on what it is that we want to build, what we want to create, what we want to pursue. The Mercurial energy being in Virgo energy, the fixer, the healer, the resolver of the Zodiac, we're focused on the smaller details, what we have power and control over, what we could do better, what we have to kick to the curb, what we have to eliminate in order for us to try something new, try something different that is going to be stronger and much supportive, much more supportive in us kind of gaining that momentum towards new goals, new visions, new dreams. The moon in Gemini energy, then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with the sun in Leo energy. So we love air and fire because this is how creative inspiration gets born. This is how new solutions get born. So we love this. We also love the fact that the moon and the sun, whenever they come together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness of what we need, what we want, what we desire. The sun shining very brightly in its rulership in Leo energy, we're heart aligned. 
We're very big, very bold in our ideas, in our thoughts, in our affections, in our wants, in our needs, in our desires. The moon in this Gemini energy, again, rapidly processing, rapidly analyzing, weighing both sides of the coin, really trying to see everything from all perspectives in order for us to gain a little bit of clarity on where it is that we would like to go from here. Just as we're doing a little bit of confidence building, a little bit of clarity building, the moon is going to semi-square Chiron. So Chiron being the wounded healer, he is retrograde now in Aries energy. So we're def definitely more open to taking a good look at our problems, especially where our mental health or limiting thoughts, limiting belief systems are holding us back, where it is that we're having a hard time kind of tapping into a new level of self-confidence, self-worth. And at this particular juncture, we're not feeling so good. We're not feeling so hot. Why? Well, we just, because we just realized what we want. We just realized what it is that we could possibly be building towards. But in that realization, we also realize what is required of us. And that feels like a lot. It feels like a lot to process. It feels like a lot to commit to. And we're starting to kind of waver in our confidence, in our self-esteem, in our abilities to actually do the hard things that need to be done in order for us to pivot and really try to gain momentum in this new path, in this new direction. We don't sit in this funk for very long. The moon in this Gemini energy then going to sextile the North Node in this Aries energy. So this is like aha moment, epiphany, light bulb goes off. We did find ourselves there in a little bit of funk, a little bit of darkness, and now we're plucking ourselves out. That's the beautiful thing about air energy is we can just change our mind, change our focus, change our concentration, flip the script, flip that inner dialogue. And suddenly we are thinking about the future once again with a more positive mind frame, with a poor, a, I'm going to say not that poor mood and attitude, more positive, confident, more optimistic outlook on what we could actually achieve, what we could actually accomplish. The moon in Gemini then going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, also in the heart and soul of the Zodiac here in this Leo energy. So again, we love this air and fire interaction. This is going to give us a light bulb moment, an aha moment on what our heart wants, especially when it comes to relationships, especially when it comes to making some bold moves in order to break free from some of those toxic relationships and actually advocate for ourselves with our wants, with our needs, with our desires, put ourselves out there. This is definitely going to be a hard activation. So again, take a listen to the Ascension forecast for this week if you haven't already to stay ahead of the energy shifting game in our physical form. The moon then goes ahead and makes a positive interaction with Neptune. This is important because Venus and Neptune are going to get together here before the day is done. So the moon interacting with Venus first is kind of kind of getting us refined in our heart space with our wants with our needs with our desires with our cravings for connection for intimacy for relationship dynamics the moon interacting with neptune is going to remind us refresh renew our soul and spirit our hopes our faith our wishes our dreams download us with a vision for us to kind of hold in our mind space so that we can be bold and brave and courageous enough to actually pursue this new want, this new need, this new desire. Now that Neptune energy can feel very overwhelming. It can also feel very, I'm going to say confusing, but the Gemini energy that the moon is in is able to look at both sides of the coin. So we're not going to find ourselves in a funk, in a state of confusion for very long. Venus then goes ahead she trines Chiron, Chiron being the wounded healer, retrograde, ready to kind of tackle the issues head on in order to fix, heal, and repair them. Venus interacting with Chiron in this way, this is opening up our heart space. We are more open to healing. We're more open to compromise. We're more open to put ourselves forth and forward if it means that we have been doing a disservice with ourselves by giving other people too much power over our lives, over our path, over our choice, over our decision. This is definitely going to make us feel real and raw and vulnerable. It is a fire on fire interaction. So that fire energy, yes, does have the ability to kind of burn away through the cords, through the gunk, through the funk. It does have the ability to regenerate, reignite a fire or spark of flame within us, especially where I'm going to say building the relationship with ourselves or concern. Chiron, of course, being retrograde and that Aries energy has everything to do with how we feel about ourselves, where it is that we're willing to do the hard work in order to kind of heal some of the wounds that we've been carrying with us for far too long. 
Venus goes ahead, makes an awkward interaction with that North Node and Aries energy. So suddenly we just, we got open to wanting to heal. We got open to getting real raw and vulnerable, but now what? Where do we go from here? What are we doing with this? What does this mean for us for the long term? This is where we start second guessing, where we retract a little bit, where we start kind of speaking fear into that confidence, into that boldness, into that vision. We're not going to sit in that energy for very long. The moon is going to conjunct Jupiter. We love this energy. This is the second conjunction of the day. Jupiter being the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. He's in this Gemini energy again, trying to give us some options, trying to kind of illuminate different opportunities for us to grow, for us to move on, for us to kind of build upon, expand upon whatever it is that we have been excited about as of late. Conjunction is very much an ending as it is a beginning. We are ending, I'm going to say the state of confusion and the negative Nancy type of narrative. What we're beginning is a realization magnifying all of the good things. We're plucking out the silver linings. We are really magnifying our curiosity. We're magnifying our options and opportunities. We're really just kind of putting the volume all the way up on feeling good, feeling confident, and really believing that as long as we are in alignment with something, as long as we can see it and we can kind of invoke the emotion needed in order to back that vision up, we can bring that baby to life. That is the manifesting equation. So Venus is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune. This is beautiful because of course, Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. Uh, whatever we can dream up, whatever we're feeling, whatever we're inspired to do, we're able to bring to life through Venus. She rules over the heart space. And as long as our heart is aligned, which of course it would be with Venus being in this Leo energy, we're bold, we're brave, we're courageous, we're in touch with our higher selves we're in touch with our heart space with our wants with our needs with our desires we are going to see venus and neptune come together highlight for us the beauty so so often we focus on the ugliness we focus on the divide we focus on all the things going wrong this is a little bit of a reality check that guess what take a good look around life isn't that bad there are, there are beautiful things every Where's that you look? Look outside at nature. Look at the butterflies. Look at the grass growing. Look at the interactions with the people you love. Look at your animals. There's so much good here. But we as human beings tend to focus on the bad and sometimes we need a little bit of a shake up in order to realize that guess what? Not all is bad. The more you focus on the bad, the bigger the bad gets. Sometimes focusing on the good, the silver linings, the beauty is going to amplify that energy and we definitely need more of that energy floating around in the cosmos. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Gemini energy, making a very awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who of course is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So this isn't either good or bad. It's just a ponder, if you will. Uh, Pluto likes to do a deep dive in the psyche. The Gemini energy likes to really attack the lower level of the intellect and how emotionally speaking, we feel about what we're thinking about or what we're focused on. Of course, Pluto's here to empower us and here to improve our situation, improve our perspective, but it is going to be intense. Intense meaning we're going to be divided. We're going to be undecided. Again, that Gemini energy is very divisive, very extreme in that nature. This is a beautiful opportunity to realize your rawness, your vulnerabilities, your fears, your insecurities, your doubts, and be able to flip the script in a much more empowering, in positive kind of way.